Blessed are you, O God, whose salvation is at hand. Come in your glory and dwell with us. Comfort, comfort my people. A word on the context of this bidding spoken by the prophet Isaiah in the apparent absence of comfort. There Isaiah was huddled with the exiles of Judah and Jerusalem in the humiliation of Babylonian captivity. How audacious there for the prophet to claim, even to insist, that Jerusalem is and was and will be this cosmic center of a divine realm. It, like the eternal word, would stand forever. And you could just hear Isaiah's contemporaries in Psalm 37, 137, by the waters of Babylon, they forlorn set down their instruments and wept at their beloved Zion's desecration and dissipation. Wonder what Jerusalem must have looked like when its luminaries and leaders were displaced from the capital, its heart ruptured and the character of its central arteries molded to the organs of its occupying powers. The people of Judah had cause to weep. And so the prophet said, comfort, comfort my people. Sometimes it's hard to grasp and glimpse that comfort through the veil of tears, but isn't it comfort? Isn't that one of the things that we are seeking? The science of comfort says yes. In this week's New York Times, author Maya Salovitz reported on the research of a fellow by the name of Jack Panskept, who was once really a dismissed neuroscientist. Um, but after his death, uh, people recovered his research and thought, this guy is really on to something. Among his studies was an in-depth research on opioids, the stuff of a present epidemic. And he was able to show that opioids actually ease parent-child separation. Or one way that this article put it was that opioids mimic the neurotransmitters that are responsible for making social connection comforting. In a word, the drug makes it feel like home and like love. To bring this even closer to home, when we look around us at some of our neighbors in the Tenderloin and elsewhere, when we look at those who are really struggling, what they're seeking isn't necessarily a high, it's comfort. Comfort, comfort my people. Times of isolation and inequality, like those of ancient Judah and our own present day, they exploit our heartache and longing for that deep, reliable, equitable social connection. Our interconnectedness is at the heart of the Christian vision, and in many ways, what a vision for a city should be. Isaiah's message, echoed centuries later by John the Baptist, is to prepare the way in the wilderness, even in the city, prepare the way. We're preparing the way for that spirit-filled realm, for that heavenly city with a level playing field and common ground. And our Christian vision of interconnectedness is best expressed in the person of Jesus. There, his forebear, John the Baptist, in the wilderness, living in the elements, feasting on locusts and wild honey, and Jesus himself, born among animals, his sleep exposed to the elements. 
He humbled himself to join our humanity so that we would be gathered into his divinity. Comfort, comfort my people. This is in part a command, in part an invitation, in part our part, a role that we can play in our city. Last year, over 700 people in the city and county of San Francisco died of drug overdoses, and upwards of 40% of those were unhoused. Next Thursday, the 16th of December at 5.30, precisely at the time that we will also be gathered for Evensong, is an annual memorial for the homeless dead which takes place on the Polk Street steps of City Hall. Sponsored by the San Francisco Night Ministry and the San Francisco Interfaith Council, this memorial is a potent opportunity to deepen our relationships to these neighbors, to comfort those who mourn, and to show a reverence for their death from which they may have been exiled in their life. I invite this Evensong community to join in holding that event in prayer. And for those of you who join online and are comfortable praying outside, to join me on the Polk Street steps at City Hall. Like the people of Judah, how audacious we might be to imagine that this people this city, too, is a cosmic center of divine justice, a place where righteousness and peace have kissed, a place where God's glory abides.